Hey, your host, and today we are gonna have a camera shootout between the Canon 80D, which is a very popular toy to photographers and YouTube content creators, and the brand new flagship from Huawei, their P30 Pro. New smartphone to the test. How well does it fare against an actual camera? Before we begin, let us look at the spec sheets of the The Huawei P30 Pro has a 6.7 inch AMOLED screen which has a 1080 by 2340 resolution. It's rated IP. And a storage space of 250. It has an in-display fingerprint reader and runs on the latest Android 9 Pie with EMUI 9.1, Huawei's latest custom OS. But the most important part of the smartphone we're looking at today is the camera. And we know that it's two very different devices. And this is in no way a scientific experiment. We simply want to see how the photos taken on this smartphone can compare to an enthusiast level. With the help of Solomon from our dynamic photography team, video unedited in any way whatsoever. And with that, let the comparisons begin. Let's talk about the The P30 Pro features the Leica Quad camera consisting of a 40 megapixel wide angle lens, the widest aperture of f1.6, a 20 megapixel ultra wide angle lens with the widest aperture of f2.2, an 8 megapixel telephoto lens with the widest aperture of f3.4, and which doesn't take pictures, but it's an infrared camera used for depth information. So only 3 out of 4 cameras capture images. Switching out to a variety of lenses. For this comparison, we are using the 18 to 125 with the aperture of f3.5 to 5.6, which is a very versatile kit lens that covers the wide angle to telephoto range. For the first category, we have to give the point to the P30 Pro considering that their wide angle lens is at 40 megapixels and the P30 Pro has an ultra wide angle lens which allows you to take nice wide angle photos whereas for the ADD, you have to spend more money to purchase a wide angle lens for a similar field of view. Next up, we'll look at the raw photo capability. By default, both devices allow you to take raw photos. However, by being just a smartphone, it's able to take raw photos. And with that, the P30 Pro gets a point. With the specs battle out of the way, it's time to see how both devices compare. For field of which is the 40 megapixel wide angle lens and field of view as well for a comparison. Putting the images side by side between the terms of low light and the in the market. But when compared to the ADD, due to difference in sensor size, the DSR reduction applied on their night shots which will result in overly sharpened edges and lots of detail. Dynamic range performance looks great for both the P30 Pro and the ADD. However, if you take a closer look, you might find that the P30 Pro has more details in the shadows and it handles the highlights better than the DSLR. This may be due to the phone's image processing software and the same result DSLR that the colours from the P30 Pro can look a little flat compared to is something that, for what it is, not everyone will be able to tell them apart unless you're a pixel people. And for this aspect, the P30 gets a point from us. Next. The P30 Pro has an amazing wide field of view that the ADD in its kit lens is just unable to match. You can just see from the photo how much more of the scene the P30 Pro can capture. But it's not without its caveats. The P30 Pro ultra-wide angle shots 
fall off and distortion around the skin. The ATD might have a tighter field of view, but it suffers less of the issues that the P30 Pro faces. The ATD can get a wider view, but it just means shutting up. Despite these issues, we would still give our point to the P30 Pro because it gives us a pretty good wide-angle photo, which comes in handy when your back is against the wall when you're taking a group photo. Next up, let's compare their telephoto capabilities. For this aspect, it's a little hard to compare simply because both devices use different types of zoom. The ATD doesn't use any digital zoom but uses optical zoom through their lens. The P30 Pro, on the other hand, relies on its three cameras for a 5 times optical zoom. On top of that, it has up to a max of 50 times digital zoom for the extreme telephoto that is known for. While having the 50 times zoom on it's an impressive feat. In terms of quality, unfortunately, it does not match up with the quality that the DSLR has to offer. It is definitely a lot less sharp than the ATD, especially considering that the image is also digitally zoomed in to match what is seen on the P30 Pro. You can also see that the image is a lot higher on 50 times zoom. Yes, it's an impressive first for a camera, but beyond novelty, the photos lack for even simple purposes like social media sharing and much worse when you on bigger screens. And with that, the ATD wins for this comparison. The last of the lens comparisons is the macro lens. Similar to the wide angle lens, for the ATD, you will actually need a proper macro lens to compare with the macro capability that the P30 Pro gives right out of the box. But the P30 Pro's macro capabilities aren't that great either. Like the telephoto, it relies on digital zoom to achieve the effect and isn't that pleasing to the eye. Despite not having a macro function, the image taken from the AT digitally zoomed to match the P30 Pro is cleaner, better and sharper. And without a doubt, the ATD takes the win. And with that, it's time to calculate the scores. The P30 Pro has 4 points and the ATD has 2 points. In terms of image quality, the ATD is but for what is worth, the P30 has a pretty solid camera and capabilities for a smartphone. So if you love to take photos, but you don't wish to carry a bulky camera around, then the P30 is an easy option for you. Thank you for tuning in to Dynamic Tech Reviews. If you like what you're watching, hit that like and subscribe button and comment below what you want to review in future. That's all for today. See you in the next one.